evening. The former Conservative Prime Minister, Sir Edward Heath, has died at his home in Salisbury at the age of 89. Ted Heath became Prime Minister in 1970. He took Britain into the common market and remained proud of his achievement, despite widespread opposition in his party. His three and a half years in Downing Street were overshadowed by strikes and power cuts. And after two election defeats in one year, he was ousted by Margaret Thatcher. Tonight, she called him a political giant and the first modern Conservative leader. Michael Burke looks back at a political life which spanned half a century. He was the Prime Minister who took Britain into Europe, yet his party never gave him the credit he felt he deserved. The Queen has asked me to form the next government and I am indeed proud to accept. To govern is to serve. He was the son of a carpenter and a chambermaid. Intelligence and ambition took him from a modest home in Broadstairs to academic excellence at Oxford. He saw action in the Second World War, one of that generation of politicians who were shaped by the experience. The knowledge of war, the experience that you all depend on one another to achieve anything worthwhile. That was very, very important in the post-war generation like Ted Heath and, of course, Willie Whitelaw. He entered Parliament in 1950. Churchill gave him his first government job and by the time of the Suez Crisis, Heath was chief whip, charged with holding the party together. In 1965, he became Tory leader the first to be elected by his fellow MPs. But up against Labour's media-savvy Harold Wilson, he seemed awkward in comparison. He's not an easy man to know, but when they know him, people feel he's a man worth knowing, a man to trust. The Conservatives tried unsuccessfully to make a virtue of their leader's cultured but shy manner. His advisers would have liked him to marry. Instead, Heath remoulded his image by becoming a world-class yachtsman. After six years with Labour at Britain's helm, the wind was finally blowing in his direction. Heath's victory in 1970 astounded the pundits. His government soon found itself immersed in industrial strife, most notably over pay rises. The new Prime Minister promised to be tough. No one can deny that today the major cause of the inflation from which we are suffering are the excessive wage demands. His cabinet supported him, but Heath infuriated many workers. He is a traitor! Though many in his party came to view his decision to take Britain into the common market as an act of treachery, Heath saw it as his greatest achievement. He got us into the European Union. I mean, that is a huge... Uh, step, a very difficult one, which I doubt would have happened without his particular kind of thoroughness and determination. Uh, that was a, an amazing achievement and it's lasted. On the home front, the prospects were darker. Strikes led to power cuts. The oil crisis prompted a pay freeze and the imposition of a three-day working week. Industrial conflict worsened as the miners promised to bring the government down. Heath called an election. We've started a job together. With your will, we shall go on and finish the job. Instead, the voters finished him. As Heath's piano was loaded into the removals van outside number 10, his party was preparing to shoot the pianist. The Industrial Relations Act, which had gone through, which I think was a very courageous act, but he went too far, tried to do too much too quickly, and the unions were very powerful at that time and the country was not ready to take them on. It took another 10 years for the country really to be ready to do what Ted Heath tried to do in 1970-71. After a second general election defeat in a matter of months, he was ousted by Margaret Thatcher. Heath's ill-disguised bitterness earned him the nickname The Incredible Sulk. He savaged her policies, but 15 years later, a Conservative cabinet did to Margaret Thatcher what she had done to him. Because it was said that you um, rang your office and said, rejoice, rejoice. I said it three times, I think. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. 
He was politically active into his 80s, and he only reluctantly retired from the Commons in 2001, nearly 51 years after he first became an MP. His fellow MPs responded with a sincere tribute to Edward Heath's unique political career. Well, as well as a long, distinguished career in the House of Commons, Sir Edward Heath was a fine musician and a world-class sailor. Sean Lay reports on Sir Edward's life outside politics. Can we have a seat? Oh, right in tune, you see. Edward Heath always found time for music. He conducted the annual carol concert in his hometown of Broadstairs, even when he was Prime Minister. Five gold rings! His mother inspired his love of music. Musical talent won him a place at Oxford. Later, as an MP fighting the 1951 election, he would return home nightly to play his beloved mother's favourite songs as she lay dying of cancer in her room upstairs. There were other women in his life, but Edward Heath was an awkward suitor. Despite the photo calls, the bachelor Conservative leader often seemed uncomfortable. A constituent recalls a dinner at which Heath simply ignored the woman seated next to him. He then conducted his conversation across the, the wife, direct to the, uh, the chap himself. And uh, the lady concerned was practically in tears at the end of the dinner. And I had to reassure her that it was certainly nothing against her personally, that he didn't find it easy to talk to women that he didn't know. Desperate to improve his leader's image, one Tory MP begged Heath's friend, the concert pianist Maura Limpney, to marry him. She didn't, but their shared love of music led to a devoted friendship. Heath's public image was dire. Harold Wilson memorably described him as a shiver looking for a spine to run up. That wasn't the Heath his 16 godchildren saw nor those who shared his passion for sailing, a holiday hobby which quickly became a serious pursuit. He was a good sailor and given plenty of room he could sail the boat as good as anybody and he used to get a bit confused in close situations but that's what we were there for to put him right. Typically it wasn't enough to take part, he had to win. Within a few years he tasted victory in the Sydney Hobart race and later skippered the winning team in the Admiral's Cup. He was no longer Prime Minister when his boat Morning Cloud sank in 1974. Two crew members died, one his godson. Soon after, he was dumped as Conservative leader. Music provided the consolation for the disappointments in his life. Edward Heath's political achievements were mixed, but his talents as conductor, musician and sailor were never in doubt. Sir Edward Heath's death was announced in the past hour and politicians and friends have already been offering tributes. Tony Blair said he was a political leader of great stature and significance. Our political correspondent James Landale reports. Sir Edward Heath celebrating his 80th birthday. Tonight many of his friends and former foes remembered the former Prime Minister. Tony Blair said Sir Edward was a man of great integrity and beliefs he held strongly from which he never wavered and he will be remembered by all who knew him as a political leader of great stature and significance. The Conservative leader, Michael Howard, said Ted Heath was one of the political giants of the second half of the 20th century. He will always be remembered as a Prime Minister who took Britain into the European Economic Community, but his achievements went far beyond that. And his old foe and successor, Baroness Thatcher, said that as Prime Minister he was confronted by the enormous problems of post-war Britain. If those problems eventually defeated him, he had shown in the 1970 manifesto how in turn they would eventually be defeated. For that, she said, and much else besides, we are all in his debt. Former Cabinet colleagues remembered how he broke the mould of Conservative politics by rising from humble origins. He started with no advantages at all in his life. And... Um... He did it all through his own talent and his own hard work. He came from almost nothing and achieved a very great deal. He never, ever uh, recanted on his belief in the European Union. He was a one-nation Tory, and he, I think, um, made a big mistake with the miners because the oil price had gone through the roof and he should have settled with the miners, but he didn't, and so we had the three-day week and he was defeated. He's a grumpy guy, but very, very friendly to me, and he wouldn't take a peerage, which I thought was rather fun. 
and he's well to the left of Mr Blair, that's all I would say about him politically. In life, Ted Heath was a controversial figure. In death tonight, he was praised on all sides for his huge contribution to British politics. James Landell, BBC News. Well, our political editor, Andrew Marr, is with me now. And Andrew, how will political history judge him, do you think? Well, I think the first thing to remember um, is that with Ted Heath's death, we lose a living link with a lot of the 20th century. I mean, here was a man who quite literally rubbed shoulders with Hitler before the Second World War, uh, who met Goebbels and Goering and Himmler, then had a very good war. Uh, as we've heard, one of the first working class boys to go rocketing up the Tory party, Chief Whip, virtually saves them from falling apart after the catastrophe of Suez, uh, becomes Prime Minister. It was said at the time of the 1970 election, the entire country thought that uh, Harold Wilson, the great political master, uh, would defeat plodding old Ted, except Ted, and he won that election. He was a much less successful domestic Prime Minister. It's absolutely true that taking us into the common market, as it then was, uh, was the achievement he was proudest of. And so much of his career, though, was seen through the prism of that relationship with Margaret Thatcher, wasn't it? That's absolutely right. I think it's a little, it's inevitable, but I think it's a little bit sad. Because um, before um, the events um, where he was ousted by Margaret Thatcher, he was seen as a great modernising force. Uh, a very, very important, quite confrontational figure uh, in the Conservative Party. Took on the unions when the Conservative government really wasn't strong enough to win that battle uh, and lost it. Um, argued with the European partners over details of policy in a way that Margaret Thatcher later would. She was the, the grocer's daughter in more ways than one. Um, and yes, there was that enormously long sulk. It was a rather generous tribute that Margaret Thatcher paid to him. I think he would prefer to have been along, around long enough to pay a slightly less <laughs> generous tribute to the late Margaret Thatcher. Um, but she was right. He was a giant. I can hear this kind of great elephantine harumph. Uh, up in the afterworld when he reads her words. Uh, and a shy man compared to the media savvy Harold Wilson. He was a very shy man. He was very proud. Uh, he, was, uh, he absolutely adored his music and, so far as I can tell, was a very, very fine musician. Uh, didn't find company easy. We live in a media age, you know, we see with Tony Blair. You need politicians who are great on telly, who can do the emoting. Ted Heath could not do any of that stuff. He was just a bit stiff. But a lot of people around him liked him the better for it. Andy Marr, thanks very much.